Supraventricular tachycardia, also called SVT, is a relatively common diagnosis in the pediatric population. It's estimated that about one in every 1,000 people will have SVT. If SVT is diagnosed before one year of life, there's about a 50% chance that it could spontaneously resolve. However, if it is diagnosed after that age, then it is unlikely to resolve. Supraventricular tachycardia generally has symptoms such as palpitations, often with a sudden onset of fast heart rate, shortness of breath, sometimes dizziness, and occasionally patients can have fainting episodes. In some patients, these episodes may be associated with exercise, activity, or uh, with caffeine. Superventricular tachycardia occurs due to a, an abnormal piece of muscle in the heart allowing electricity to loop. This loop of current causes superventricular tachycardia. To show you an animation of a common type of superventricular tachycardia, follow me to this balthus.org animation. Normally, the electricity in the heart starts at the sinus node. This electricity then passes through the atrium to the AV node, seen here in the middle of the heart. The AV node is a bridge between the top and bottom chambers of the heart that acts like a toll bridge. It receives a signal and sends it to the ventricles. In a common type of supraventricular tachycardia, an electrical signal passes through the abnormal muscle within the heart, causing the heart to beat quickly. This extra muscle, in this case seen as accessory pathway, can allow electricity to loop back again to the atrium and return to the AV node. The AV node passes a signal back to the ventricle, which can again loop back to the atrium through the accessory pathway and again to the AV node. As you can see, the heart is no longer under control of the sinus node, but under this loop of current. This can cause the heart to beat at over 200 beats per minute. This is what's called supraventricular tachycardia.